You booked it, episode 86. Hey, entertainers and performers of the world. I'm your host, Dane Reese, and welcome to You Booked It, where I chat with inspiring entertainment professionals seven days a week. By digging into their journey, we're going to discover everything you need to do to have a successful entertainment career. You know, because training usually skips that part about how to actually make your skills work for you in the real world. Fellow entertainers, my drive here at You Booked It is to share the inspiring and incredible journeys of successful entertainment professionals. We're here to support your journey. So go to YouBookedItPodcast.com and join the You Booked It email community, where we dig deep into truly actionable things you can be doing right now to book that next audition, submission, or gig. If you enjoy this free podcast, please show your support and search for You Booked It on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app, where you can subscribe so you don't miss an episode, leave a rating, and review. And now. Let's do this. Okay, let's get started. I am excited to introduce my guest today, Deborah Wanger. Are you ready for this, Deborah? I'm ready. Award winning actor, singer, and certified wellness coach, Deborah Wanger has performed in theaters, cabarets, and screens from New York to Los Angeles. She's a sought after public speaker leading workshops at university theater programs and corporate groups across the country. While working at CAA and as a talent manager, she helped guide the careers of many top Hollywood names. Deborah draws wisdom from decades of working as an actor, talent manager, and lifestyle coach to give actors and creatives a holistic approach to their profession that marries mind, body, spirit, and craft. Her book, The Resilient Actor, How to Kick Ass in the Business Without It Kicking Your Ass, was an Amazon bestseller. Deborah, that is a quick intro of who you are and what you've done, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Fill in the gaps, who you are, and a little bit more about what you do as a professional in the entertainment industry. Okay, a little more of who I am. I consider myself a stage actor, a coach, a public speaker, an author, a mom, and a human just trying to get by. Yes. <laughs> I'm originally from <laughs> Chicago, Illinois, and I, I currently live in San Diego, California, with several cities in between. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right, let's move on to this next section. And Deborah, look, I am a sucker for a good quote. What is your favorite quote you'd like to share with everyone? Can I pick two? Absolutely. Okay, because I got it down too. Okay. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. I think that's a Mark Twain. And be so good, they can't ignore you. That's Steve Martin. I love that. And can you expand on those a little bit on how they've applied and worked their way into your life and your career? Yeah, I, I think, well, starting with the Mark Twain, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. That I think for a long time, I was afraid that I wasn't good enough and that my unique things that if I didn't fit in some ways that those were detriments, but actually the things that make me unique are what make me unique and interesting and different and more castable or my specific story, you know, brings me te texture. And, and when I'm authentically myself, that's the most interesting. That's the most castable. That's the most, that's the person that people want to be with the most is the authentic me, not someone I'm trying to be somebody else. For sure. Now, as far as the other one, the Steve Martin quote, be so good, they can't ignore you. I think that just means just keep doing what you do and do it well and come prepared and work your butt off. And then people will find you. Just be consistently great at your craft and people will find you. Just good work is good work and they'll find you. Yeah, I love that. And you're right. That first quote, I love it. Actually, both really play into each other, really. But I think all of us, when we first start out, we're so inclined to try to mold ourselves after others because we see what we perceive to be success in front of us. And we try to be that because we don't really have a big library of experience to pull from. That's how we all start. But unfortunately, I think a lot of us end up staying there too long instead of embracing, you know what, I have worked on myself. I have developed these skills. Now it's time for me to really embrace 
that, who I am, and offer that to the world and feel confident and to know that, hey, that's enough. Absolutely. And to embrace what you bring to the table, what you have specifically that you can do that's unique and interesting about you. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's move on to this section. And Deborah, of course, you are an entertainer. I am an entertainer. And I think that you'd agree that this industry can be one of the most subjective, brutally honest, personally emotional industries in existence. And you know as well as I that in order to create and have a successful career in this industry like you're having now takes a lot of of dedication and hard work. And while, yeah, there is an outrageous amount of fun and excitement doing what we do, there are also our fair share of obstacles, challenges, and failures we are going to experience and we're going to have to move forward through. So tell us, what is one key challenge, obstacle, or failure you've experienced in your career? And how did you come out the other side better because of it? I would say that the, probably the darkest, most challenging period of my career was when I was in my young 20s, and I was living and working in South Florida, and I was doing a lot of theater, but I was personally bankrupt, not financially bankrupt, but personally bankrupt. I had mm. very low self-esteem. I was overweight. I was broken out. I was depressed. I, w I got suicidally depressed. I had almost no social life aside from the casts of shows that I was hanging out with. And I just, I had no life except for my acting career. And I, I did it all wrong. I didn't know how to be happy and healthy as an actor. And I actually left the business for 10 years trying to find happiness and health and some balance. And by going to those really dark places and being so unhappy when I came back to acting and then I got certified as a coach and started coaching other actors, then I, I chose to write a book and really help other people not to go to the same place that I had been because you don't have to be depressed and fat and miserable and so unhappy to be a, in a creative career. It's if, There's a lot of pitfalls, but you don't have to be like that. So I, I wrote the book for other people, the book that I wish I had when I was in that period. I wrote a, a book and I sent it back to myself in a time capsule of everything I wish I had known when I started out so other people wouldn't have to go through that same pain. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And you're, and you're right. So much of this industry, so much of the real world of this industry is never discussed. And we're all just thrown out there to the sharks to figure it out for ourselves. And while, yeah, we all have very different journeys there are so many parallels and similarities that we all are experiencing together in this industry because as artists, we're putting ourselves on the line emotionally all the time to audiences, to casting directors, to our cast mates. It's a very vulnerable industry to be in, but it's also so fulfilling and wonderful for all those reasons as well. And I'm so happy that you that you wrote the book that you wish someone would have given you when you went into this industry blindly. And there's so much knowledge to be garnered from that. I love that. Well, great, because that was the plan. <laughs> yeah, Wonderful. I mean, I, I came out of a BFA program, which I didn't finish. I left because I was going through some stuff. And I had never heard any of this stuff. I had never heard anything about self-care or balance or health and wellness. And I learned how to prepare a good 16 bars. I think we talked about resumes and how to yep. audition and dance combinations and all that stuff. But no one was having the conversation about career longevity and how to take care of yourself and how to not go crazy and how to ride the waves of unemployment and rejection and how to not be a jerk, you know, how to be nice to yeah. other people, how to yeah. get along, how to build relationships, all this stuff that really matters, but it, at the time, at least, wasn't being discussed. Only now I find that educators are starting to talk about these things because it's a necessity because people are burning out. You hear every day about actors, even really successful ones who are crashing and burning, killing themselves, drug overdoses, all kinds of stuff because they're not trained how to take care of themselves. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a huge thing. And you're right, the whole subject of mental health and self-care is it was such a taboo topic i think for so long and you're right just now in the last handful of years has it really become a topic and i mean it's 
I think we experience some of that, maybe in an extreme, more of an extreme level, more regular and more frequently than maybe other demographics. But I guess I'm not really equipped to say or have that much of an opinion on that. That's just my initial thought. But with with everyone talking about it now and it's becoming more mainstream, it's really great to see all of this content starting to be produced and given to people to help get through these times because it's such a giant part of your career. Absolutely. And if an athlete was saying, oh, I have to go home and rest or I have to eat lots of vegetables because I'm in training or something like that, no one would question it. But as actors, if we want to take care of our bodies, people think we're crazy. But we are creative athletes. We have to take our take care of our bodies and our minds and rest and recover and all that. Just in the same way an athlete has their event, doing a show, being on a set, those are very athletic and they're very draining. They're very emotional. They're, as you mentioned, they're very vulnerable. We have to take care of ourselves like creative athletes. Absolutely. I love that term, creative athletes. Love it. And let's move on to a time that I like to call your spotlight moment that <laughs> one moment in time you realized yes i am going to be an entertainer for a living or maybe it was yes this is what i need to be doing as an entertainer tell us about that i now take you i'm age nine i take you to elkhart lake wisconsin to a summer camp production of the wizard of oz where little deborah little debbie starred as toto in the munchkin scene in Wizard of uh. Oz. And it was July in Wisconsin. It was so humid. And I'm in a full head-to-toe fursuit, including the, this furry hat. And I got to sing the reprise of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I got to sing You Are Over the Rainbow. And I almost passed out because I was sweating so much. Uh. <laughs> but I had my moment in the spotlight, and there was no going back. So I Toto and Toto that. and the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> I love children's theater. The, the, the <laughs> costumes people get put in. You're like, I was rock number four. You're like, brilliant. Right. <laughs> so good. There's no I... small parts, <laughs> only small dogs. Yeah. <laughs> love it. And let's piggyback on that question real quick and talk about your number one booked it moment. Walk us through that day, the auditions and callbacks, if they happen to be a part of it. What was going on in your life? And what about that moment? makes it your favorite booked it moment this one is a little is relatively recent this was in 2019 actually i got to do a production of angels in america oh great play which yeah that's the the olympics of theater and yeah. every actor in southern california and probably plenty beyond that submitted for this but everybody in town went in for this show and there's seven roles it's a seven hour to two-part piece for those who aren't as familiar. But, and I went in and I, I read, and I had worked with this director in this theater company several times, but I'd only done musicals there. So I was like, uh, I don't know, are they even going to see me? I'm, quote, a musical theater actress. I'm always playing the maid or somebody's mom or the teacher. Are they even going to see me for this? But I'm like, you know what? I'm going in. I worked my butt off on it. I did my audition. It went well. The callbacks were a month or two later. Everybody in town was in that room. <laughs> Everybody in town was in that room. And I, I read, and it was great. And then I heard they had more callbacks and I was like, oh, but I got an email saying, we'd like to offer you the role of the angel. And I have to say that was such a moment of pride and, I, and hard work. And I, I, it was such an honor that they would trust me with such an important piece of yeah. theater and such a important part of, of history. And I felt like I'd been called up to the major. This was the all-star team. And uh, it was it was a dream from the very beginning to the very last second. Every single person, every designer, every every cast member, the directors, guy doing the graphics, every everybody was bringing their A-game. And it was just, that was a good one. So that was a really uh, very special moment for me. Yeah, I love that. And you're right. That is such... A powerful piece. Wow. What I can only imagine what that would have been like. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. And it's 25 years old and it still holds up. I know. It's yeah. so good. I think everyone that, even if you are not the theater going person, everyone needs to read that script. It's amazing. 
Yeah. And we were discovering things in that script up until the very last night. It's so dense. It's so layered. There's so much in there. And we were mm. always discovering new stuff. Love it. It's a masterpiece. Yep. Yes. And let's take a moment to talk about the present. What projects are you working on now? What are you looking forward to? And hey, it is a crazy weird time. We are amidst <laughs> this global pandemic. How do you see the entertainment industry moving forward in the next couple of years? Wow, there's a lot there. Yeah, because as we're talking now, I am in San Diego. I'm at home with my three children. And I'm doing a lot of momming. There's not a lot of places to send the kids out to. There's no school and very few activities right now. So I am doing a lot of parenting. And I am, obviously, there's no acting gigs right now. So it is a rebuilding and reassessing and self-care time. I'm focusing on the book and coaching and ways that I can be of service to a lot of unemployed actors. So I'm doing some pro bono coaching. I'm doing pay what you can coaching. I'm doing interviews and talking about the book because it is a time that people really need extra assistance with self-care and extra assistance with taking care of themselves. So I am taking my own advice. <laughs> I'm practicing what I preach. I'm getting reminded of everything that I wrote in the book. It's, oh yeah, I need to hear this. And finding ways to share my message and help people without traveling. I'm not going into to crowded theaters. I'm not traveling to universities right now and, and speaking in person like I was. So I'm doing Zoom calls with professors and, and stu student groups, and I'm talking to great people like you. And, and I'm also using this as a time to rebuild myself. It's a really interesting time where... It's a recalibration. A lot of stuff is being stripped away. All the labels we have, all the successes we have are taken away. So it's a real opportunity to say, okay, if I'm not an actor, what am I? If I'm not a, an ex, what am I? The, the stores are closed and the restaurants are closed and the theaters are closed. And who am I if you take all that away? Who am I? And then some of what I'm finding and what other people are finding is stuff that's not fun to look at. So it's, uh, it hasn't been the easiest time. But it's also been a, it's like, it's like a big forest fire. A lot of stuff is burning away and then it's a chance to rebuild and a chance Absolutely. to re regrow. I love that analogy. And you're right. This is, it's, it's a outrageously difficult time. And you're right. We've been so much of our identities have been taken away, but we're all in this together. But it's also one of the only times we're probably ever going to get again in our lives to really sit with ourselves and be introspective and really work on ourselves at the level that we are able to during this time if we choose to do that for ourselves. There's so much there and you're so right to try to take advantage of this time and really discover who you are when all of these things that you've previously identified with aren't available anymore. I love that you're doing that, but also highlighting that so we can share it with everyone else that's listening that while it's not a ideal time in the slightest, there's a lot of wonderful things that can also happen out of this. Yes. And there's some people who are in a place where they feel safe and comfortable and they can access their creativity so they can use it as a time to write a play or produce on mm. Zoom or learn monologues or rebuild their book or create. Yeah. And then other people are at a place where they're not able to do that because they're just working on safety and survival. And that's okay. It's finding activities that, that are healthy and help you feel safe and create health and balance and reassurance. And if it's meditation, if it's exercise, if it's calling friends, if it's hot baths, whatever it is that, that help you get to that point. Because if you don't feel safe, you can't get creative. Like creative is a luxury. If you look at the human needs, you have, yes. to, uh, you have to feel safe first before you can create. So um, with some people, they're already there and they can access their creativity and they can find some exciting projects. And other people, it's just getting them through the day. And that's okay, because there's a lot going on right now. And it, it's there are threats. There is, there, a lot of us are triggered. And so it's really having patience and grace with yourself to calm yourself down and get to a healthy place. Yeah, I'm so glad that you added that on because 
speaking with just some of my really great personal friends and other people that have been on the podcast, that it's okay to not feel creative. I think a lot of people will, I've heard this a lot, that people will be scrolling through their social media because there's lots of time to do that right now. (laughs) And they see all these people doing this or that or getting fit or doing whatever creative project. And then they start putting that on themselves and putting the pressure that, oh, I've got all this time. I, I should be doing this. I should be doing this. I should be creative. But if you aren't, that is okay. It's okay to not be outrageously productive during this time. You have to really focus on you. And that's all that really matters. And, you know, you do what you can. I, I have had moments where I've looked at social media, I've ever heard what my friends are doing, and I go, I am a failure because I'm not alphabetizing my spice drawer right now. <laughs> right. You know, I'm not having a Martha Stewart moment. I haven't written the great American novel or I haven't made a new online course or whatever it is. And then there's also, yeah, but I kept three kids alive <laughs> and, yeah. I, and I kept myself alive. And I did a lot of dishes and cooked a lot of meals and walked the dog, you know, and I didn't jump off a ledge today. That's still a pretty, that's a success. So Absolutely. It's, it's the same thing. We are still comparing ourselves to other people and um, not embracing where we are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'd like to move on to one of my favorite sections of the interview. I call it the Grease Lightning Round. <laughs> I am going to ask you a handful of questions. I want you to answer them as quickly and concisely as possible, one after another. Are you ready? I am so ready. Okay, first question. What was the one thing holding you back from committing to a career as an entertainer? Fear and lack of confidence. Second question. What is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Be prepared. You can never be too prepared and have a life outside of acting. Oh, so true. Third question. What is something that is working for you now? Or if you'd like to go pre-COVID, what was working for you before our industry went on pause? Working for me now is getting some form of intense exercise every day. It burns off the crazy. I started the, this uh, shelter in place. I wasn't working out every day and I felt it and I was anxious and depressed. But once I started really doing some kind of exercise, biking, yoga, running something that helped my mood so much, I really needed to burn off the anxiety. Absolutely. Now, I would also say as much as you can have a routine, that is also helpful. Oh, yes. Yeah, Absolutely. And the fourth question, what is your best resource, whether that is a book, a movie, a YouTube video, maybe a podcast, maybe a piece of technology that you found is helping your career right now? Can I say my own book? Because it actually is because I wrote this book for a younger me. And it's Physician Heal Thyself. All the advice in there, I still need to hear. We write what we need to hear. I would say that. And then I'm listening to a lot of podcasts and Audible. I find just walking the dog, washing dishes, doing all that to just have positivity pumping into my ears as much as possible. There's so much negative input that I'm trying to find positive inputs whenever I can. So podcasts and uh, listening to books on tape. Absolutely. I love that. Yep. We definitely become a product of what we experience and what we choose to put into our brains. Mm-hmm. So you, you are what you eat and you are what you listen to, too. Absolutely. And the fifth question If you had to start your career from scratch, but you still had all the knowledge and experience you collected from your career in this industry, what would you do or not do? Would you do anything differently or would you keep it the same? I would go to every audition, whether I thought it was realistic or not, whether I felt like it or not, whether I felt like I was right for it or not, I would just go and audition and not talk myself out of it ever. Great. And the last question, what is the golden nugget knowledge drop you've learned from your successful career in this industry you'd like to leave with our listeners? The golden nugget? (laughs) I have so many nuggets. Okay. So (laughs) I I got a bag of gold. (laughs) (laughs) I got I got nuggets. So what I was going to say, take care of yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. Take care of yourself. But the other one, because I, you can decide which one you like better is auditioning is your job. An accountant does not decide whether they feel like going into work 
in the morning. They don't decide whether they feel like crunching the numbers or doing the books or doing the taxes. They go because they're paid to do it and it's their job. In the same way, actors should not be deciding whether they feel like going to an audition or not. You go because it's your job. Booking the job is a perk, but auditioning is your job. And you show up whether you feel like it or not. Wow, that is such brilliant perspective. I love that. And I will be keeping both of those nuggets (laughs) in the final episode or the final (laughs) editing of this. And to wrap up this baby, Deborah, it is time to give yourself a plug. Where can we find you? How do our listeners connect with you? Is there anything you want to promote? Yeah. So DebraWanger.com. One website. It's all there. Information on the books, public speaking, acting gigs I've got going. You can hear me sing from my CD if you want to. There's articles, podcasts, all of it. And it's all on DebraWanger.com. And the, what I'd like to promote is The Resilient Actor, which is available on Amazon and Audible, or you can get it from the website. And that is the book that I've been talking about. I've got the book. I've got a workbook. I've got an, an Audible version of that, so you can listen to it while you're exercising. But uh, it's all at DebraWanger.com. Beautiful. And for everybody listening out there, I have put the links to everything she just talked about in the description of this episode. Deborah. Thank you so much for being here. It has been such a pleasure and an honor to speak with you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Stay well. Thank you so much for joining us today. My one call to action for you is to go to youbookedpodcast.com and join our free email community where we dig deep into a continually growing resource of truly actionable things you can be doing right now to help advance your entertainment career. Don't miss an episode. We have a new guest seven days a week. Search for You Booked It on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app and subscribe today. All the best to you. We'll see you tomorrow.